Good morning, Congress. Can I get your attention? I know everybody's really excited to be here at the 156th Annual Co-op Congress. You're very welcome. Uh, Congress is where we move our agenda forward. We have a room full of business leaders, trailblazers, thought leaders and pioneers from diverse fields, all united by a shared commitment to cooperation. So it's great to see so many of you here and over the next two days, as you know, we'll be debating and developing our cooperative agenda. Um, but in terms of why we are here and what we're hoping to achieve over the next couple of days is we all believe in a fairer society and that cooperatives can and will bring that altogether different way of doing business. Cooperatives bring solutions, as we know, and cooperatives fix broken things. And let's face it, there's quite a lot that's broken at the moment. Uh, last year at Co-op Congress, we heard about cooperative solutions making huge changes, for example, in social care. And now we hear about putting ownership and control in the right hands can achieve amazing things. But as I said, there's so many things that are broken that really could do with cooperative solutions. Do you think that if Thames water was owned and controlled by the people that drank the water and swam in the water, they'd pump sewage into the water? Do you think that if the railways were controlled and operated by the workers, they would actually be able to get the right trains to the right stations with the right staff to be able to go on time? We think so. Um, and what about the post office? Again, if that was owned and controlled by the postmasters and the communities they serve, might they have carried out a fairer assessment of the missing funds caused by the Horizon system? You can see where we're going with this. Uh, cooperatives build resilient businesses and fair businesses and they produce greater outcomes for society. Our movement is seven businesses strong. We're in an exciting time. You might have heard, and especially if you were at Angel Square yesterday, that there's a general election on the horizon. So this is our moment to be able to speak with one voice. Like I say, there's 7,000 business, cooperative businesses, but it's just 1% of all business types in the UK. And when you look at the £87 billion that's brought in by cooperative and mutual businesses, which we'll be going on to talk about today, What's really important is that money stays in the UK and stays within the locality of where it's generated and brings that wealth to the community. But it's really difficult to raise finance, there's issues with legislation. So I'm asking you all, actually, in Co-op Fortnight, which comes up uh, straight after Congress, to ensure you pledge our support and back co-ops so that we can deliver a clear voice to whoever forms the next UK government, that we're a united movement and we can help deliver some of those solutions that are very much needed here in the UK. So, big task ahead. We want you to enjoy the weekend, but we absolutely want you to ambassador and we've got lots to get through. Um, but it's wonderful, as always, to be back here in Birmingham. Cooperation is strong in Birmingham. For those of you that make it to uh, the end tomorrow, we've got the Birmingham Dance Cooperative Farming for us. We've got co-ops like the Good Work Co-op, we've got Cooperative Web, and of course, Cooperatives West Midlands. And we're gonna be hearing about some more of the co-ops in uh, Birmingham because welcoming us to the city of Birmingham we have Karen McCarthy who's the cabinet member for finance for Birmingham City Council. Welcome Karen. Thank you and good morning everyone. It's a huge pleasure to welcome you all to Birmingham for Co-op Congress 2024. I'm really sorry about the weather. Uh, Birmingham is a city of rich cooperative and mutual heritage, stretching all the way back to the formation of the world's first building society at the Golden Cross Inn in Aston in 1775. Whilst the city and the world has transformed many times over since those days, 
the values that underpinned the modest beginnings of the co-op movement in Birmingham are arguably more important than ever. Shortly after I was first elected to the City Council as a, a Labour and Co-op member, we celebrated the centenary of Mary Cottrell uh, being elected as the, the first Labour woman councillor in the city. And Mary was absolutely involved in all aspects of the, the co-op movement in the city. Uh, she was on the board of the Ten Acres and Sturchley Cooperative Society and eventually um, left local politics um, for the board of the Co-op Wholesale Society. And when we unveiled a blue plaque for her, one of her family members brought along a photo of Mary launching a ship for the Co-op Wholesale Society. Still aspire to that one. This is a city of fantastic grassroots organisations, a city of collaboration and rich community capital. Whether it's Birmingham Friends of the Earth with their community share offer, which enabled them to refurbish their building, uh, which you have a chance to see tomorrow night. This is not going to be an endless set of trailers, but there is a yellow leaflet about their event tomorrow night for you. Um, Birmingham Student Housing Co-op, who have a, a brilliant story to tell about how they found and financed through cooperative links um, a student housing co-op um, in what is a broken housing market in the city. The co-ops of Sturchley, we call it cooperative Sturchley, and a number of the co-ops have come together to set up a, a project which includes new premises for uh, the bike foundry, loaf and artifact, but also a cooperative housing element to the, the building. And as always with co-ops, it's not necessarily the start, it's how they deal with the the problems that occur along the way, and they have shown such resilience on that project, and we look forward to seeing that completed. The Active Wellbeing Society, which um, runs wellbeing services on behalf of the council, that one's a great example, and again, they have their own story to tell, but my takeaway um, is the value of having proper cooperative advice uh, for organisations that want to uh, take a project forward. And our latest cooperative venture, York Supplies in Kings Heath, where the community, devastated at the potential loss of their local hardware sh shop, um, came together to, to set up a, a co-op to, to take it on. The city's home to a wealth of organisations. Uh, between Rose and myself, we've still only mentioned uh, a small proportion of them, but they harness the power of cooperation to provide benefit to our communities. And during the pandemic, we saw that we are at our strongest when large anchor organisations like the council work in collaboration with co-ops community organisations, charities and partners across the city. I was delighted when in 2020, after years of, of campaigning, Birmingham City Council became the 75th member of the Co-op Council's Innovation Network, which has given us It's given us an excellent opportunity to learn from best practice from across the country and indeed beyond. Birmingham City Council, as you'll know, is now fa facing a series of challenges resulting in significant budget cuts being required over this year and next and government intervention in the form of commissioners. We've had to make some really difficult decisions on where the council directs its resources limited um, as they are to ensure that we continue to provide the services that the people of our city rely on. While there are many challenges ahead for the council, few are bigger than the challenge of transforming 
the way that we work to better deliver for our city. We must find new ways of working, and that means losing the, the council knows best attitude that we know has been all too prevalent in the past. In finding new ways of working, we must seek to be better partners, working with those organisations across the city to deliver for our residents. Whilst this is a time of great difficulty for the council and the city, it's also a time of great opportunity. As a proud Labour and Cooperative Council, I want to see the council working closely with the cooperative movement and organisations such as Save Birmingham offer the ch us the chance to think about how the council's many and varied assets are best deployed for the benefit of our communities. You'll have a chance to hear from Save Birmingham uh, later in the day. They've also got a fringe meeting at lunchtime and looping back to my trail for Co-op Council's Innovation Network. If you pick up a copy of their report, there's also a, an account in there of how Save Birmingham is uh, working um, with communities to empower them to identify the assets that they value most. So, there's never been a more fitting time for Co-op Congress to be taking place in Birmingham. We're on the brink of huge political change in the UK, and across the country, local authorities are struggling under the weight of demand for services. It's clearer than ever that we need new ways of working, and the co-op movement must be at the heart of this. Uh, and the commitment yesterday uh, to increase the size of cooperative development is, is very welcome and gives us a, a way forward. I'd like to wish you all the best as Congress begins, and I hope that despite the weather, we'll welcome you back to Birmingham again in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Karen, for your warm welcome to the city region and uh, for everything that you're doing around uh, cooperation. We're certainly looking forward to working with you. I've just been reminded, hashtag Co-op Congress, let's get trending in Birmingham, please. There's lots of tweets, etc., flying about, so if you can use that hashtag. But I'd like to welcome now our uh, sponsors of Co-op Congress, to whom we are very grateful. It means we can put it online for people uh, who can't make it. That includes our AGM and supporting the National Youth Summit tomorrow. So a few words now from our sponsor. Uh, and we've got Gary McDermott, who's the Chief Commercial Officer of the Cooperative Bank. If you'd like to join us, Gary. <clears throat> Thank you, Rose, for the lovely welcome. And good morning to everyone joining us today, either here in Birmingham or online from across the UK. I apologise for the gruff voice. It's the worst day I could have picked this week to develop one. Maybe the M6 travel this morning. But it's a pleasure to represent the Cooperative Bank. And I'm also pleased that we're supporting the Co-op Congress for the fourth year running. So not quite the 156 that Rose mentioned, but the last four. Really proud to be supporting the Congress. The theme of this year's Congress being empowering cooperation is the one that we as a business have and will always champion. Our bank was formed in the early days of the cooperative movement, in 1872 to be precise, when the cooperative societies that made up the cooperative wholesale society decided they needed their own bank to make it easy to trade and grow the market share of cooperative businesses. That was the beginning of the cooperative bank, and our heritage remains a source of pride for our customers and colleagues today. If you are a personal or business customer of the bank, and obviously I hope that many of you are in the room today, you may be aware that we're about to embark on the next phase of our story with the recent news that the Coventry Villain Society will, be, will become our new home in Q1 2025. This seems like a good opportunity to provide an update on the deal and what it means for our customers and the business. As I said, we expect the transaction to complete in the first quarter of 2025, subject to regulatory approval and certain other conditions being met. And importantly, we don't expect that this will change the experience for our cooperative bank brand or services to customers, which we expect to operate for several years, as is. 
Importantly, the future combined business with over 90 billion of assets will become the seventh largest in the UK with over 4.5 million customers nationwide. Its scale and resilience will improve significantly. We'll be capable of bringing a much larger and broader range of products, services and value to customers. And crucially, the combination promises to benefit both new and existing cooperative and credit union customers too. The transaction really is quite momentous as it returns the bank to mutual ownership. And I hope you agree it's an exciting milestone in our history. We very much see the Coventry Bill Society as an organisation with shared values and heritage and feel the society is a natural new home for us. UK mutual banking models provide an alternative, credible and ethical alternative for both personal and business customers. The long-term service value emphasis and sustainability focus of the sector offers customers the opportunity to drive positive change through their banking provision. So, whilst this certainly will be a big change, one thing that will remain is the Cooperative Bank's unwavering commitment to its values. The values that are shared by every single person in the room today. These values are enshrined in our articles, the blueprint for our business, and they inspired us to introduce our unique customer-led ethical policy all the way back in 1992. Now, some 370,000 of our customers have shaped this policy through regular polls. In our last one, we asked customers to tell us about the ethical issues that concern them most. Customers told us that they wanted to see us act on issues like climate change and human rights abuses. But importantly, a significant number wanted to see us supporting the cooperative sector and actively promoting cooperative businesses. You're here today because we want to ensure that cooperatives like yourselves can talk to us about the support we can offer, but also because our customers recognise the importance of the sector to society and they want us to embrace it, to empower cooperation now and for future generations. With that mandate, we'll continue to champion the movement and support cooperative businesses through our products, services and sponsorship of events like this. So to give you some examples, in partnership with our friends at Cooperatives UK, we've provided around £3 million of funding since 2016 to sponsor a programme of business support for cooperatives. The programme has supported over 2,000 groups to develop and grow with training, hackathons, specialist technical, technical advice and mentoring. One fantastic example, I think Karen referred to the business name, of the impact this programme is in the room today. I'm hoping it's here. It's, it's Richard Bickle from York Supplies. And York Supplies is a traditional hardware store here in, here in Birmingham, the heart of the Midlands, which with the help of the business support programme, managed to set up as a cooperative when the previous owner, John, decided to retire in 2022. It's great to see businesses like York Supplies and the local communities benefiting from the programme. We're proud to help Cooperatives UK to inspire the next generation of cooperators by sponsoring the National Youth Summit on Cooperation, which will be held alongside Co Congress tomorrow. We're also delighted to have some of our own graduates here over the next couple of days to support representing the bank and demonstrating the importance of the role of young people in the future of the movement. Another important element of our ethical policy is our commitment to the communities we serve. That's why we proudly campaign with partner organisations to restore greenery and wildlife in the most nature-deprived communities across the country with our partner Friends of the Earth and campaign for fairer renting within the private rented sector with another partner shelter. Earlier this year, we were thrilled to sponsor the Sports Give Back Awards, which aired on ITV, which celebrated and rewarded the invaluable work of individuals, organisations and charities all over the UK who change lives and support local communities through sport. I'm sure many of you here in the room today will affiliate with a local community-based sports club, and you all recognise and appreciate the efforts that go into running and developing them. To help celebrate our sponsorship, we donated an additional £20,000 from our customer donation fund to support sport-related organisations, which has already provided more than £1.1 million of funding to over 1,000 local courses across the UK. Another example, a recent beneficiary of the customer donation fund is a company called Signalize, which is a Liverpool-based cooperative that helps local healthcare services to access British Sign Language interpreters allowing them to provide better health care to deaf people within their communities. Signalise was awarded a £1,000 grant from the fund in October of last year. With this, the organisation has been able to host additional community outreach events and expand their membership, 
giving more deaf people access to this vital service. It's an incredible organisation and a great example of the types of projects that really make a difference within local communities and help to inspire and empower the people that live in them. Please do visit myself and our team at the bank at the stand in the exhibition hall to find out more about the work within our communities, talk to us about your banking needs, personal business, and find out about our current personal current account switching offer, so it's a bit of a sales plug, and our free banking proposition for cooperative social enterprises and credit unions. In our view, and I hope it's one you share, I do think our collective banking choices can make a difference in a positive way to drive change, protect the environment, improve society. Choose an ethical bank. Thank you.